I'm Mr. Olson. Welcome to Wow Talk. Today's topic is Key Concept 1.2, which is the Neolithic Revolution and Early Agricultural Societies. The Neolithic Revolution is the agricultural revolution. It's when human beings invented agriculture and learned to domesticate plants and animals. Most historians argue that this is the single most transformative event in all of human history. It's also relatively recent, only occurring about 10,000 years ago. Here's a cool way to think about it. Imagine that all of human history was a 24-hour clock, beginning at midnight. Humans would have been hunters and gatherers, beginning at midnight, going all through that night and early morning, then noon and afternoon, and into the next night. We would have only invented agriculture for the last six minutes of our timeline at 11.54 p.m. So even though 10,000 years sounds like a long time ago, this is actually a relatively recent development. And it's not an overstatement to say that it changes everything. Agriculture is going to develop independently in a variety of places across the earth. So about 8,000 BCE, so about 10,000 years ago, in the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea, agriculture is going to be first invented in an area called Mesopotamia. And then independently, all within a couple thousand years, agriculture is also going to show up in the Nile River Valley, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in the Indus River Valley, in the Yellow River, in Papua New Guinea, in the Mesoamerican region, and in the Andes Mountains. The crazy thing about this is most of these are going to occur completely independently. So if you were to compare the agricultural revolution to, say, the industrial revolution, um, it played out completely differently. The industrial revolution started in one place, Great Britain. In contrast, the agricultural revolution developed independently over a couple thousand year period. You probably noticed that most of those territories where agriculture developed were within those temperate zones highlighted on the map. Now, some historians call those latitudes between those lines the lucky latitudes. What does that mean? It's not that these human beings were any smarter than the human beings that were adapting the environment in other places. They were lucky in terms of their latitudes. They were lucky in terms of the temperate climate that had gotten warm enough right about 10,000 years ago to make agriculture available. So, as you're going to see, agricultural societies really quickly began to dominate those who continued to hunt and gather. And it's not their attitudes that made them dominant, it was their latitudes that made them dominant. So we're looking at latitudes, not attitudes, that's going to define some of the power dynamics that come after the agricultural revolution. First big idea here, the domestication of plants and animals gives us a surplus of food. And when you have a surplus, all sorts of things are going to happen. It means not everybody in society has to work on gathering food, right? There's surplus, there's extra. So you're going to be able to feed priests and warriors and governors and artisans, and people are going to be able to specialize in labor besides worrying about how they're going to get food for the day. As a result of the Neolithic Revolution, we see a population explosion. On this chart, you can see that right around the Agricultural Revolution, on the eve of agriculture taking over the world, there was only about 2 million people on Earth. Just a few thousand years later, there were 115 million. All that surplus of food meant that human beings were going to be able to have more children and feed more mouths. And that has all sorts of implications, too. The Neolithic Revolution led to an explosion in technology. And irrigation techniques were developed so they could control the water supply. And they didn't have to just rely on natural rainfall. They were able to irrigate and, and water crops so that they could grow them more consistently and effectively. As a result, human beings stopped being nomadic and began to settle into villages, which eventually became towns, which eventually became urban centers. Human beings have been nomadic up to this point. What agriculture allowed them to do is to settle down into villages, which eventually became towns and eventually became large urban cities, right? And once you're living in a city with thousands and eventually millions of people, the way you interact with others is completely going to change. Now, it's not just about domesticating plants. The other thing we're doing here is domesticating animals, especially in Afro-Eurasia. In the Americas, there's no large domesticatable animals, so things are going to play out a little bit differently. But in Africa and Eurasia, human beings are going to domesticate animals, and pastoralism is going to develop as a lifestyle. Pastoralism means that you herd animals for your livelihood. 
So pastoralists are going to develop some of the same structures that agricultural societies did, but they're going to remain semi-nomadic because they're going to have to keep searching for new grasslands for their herds. All sorts of new technologies are developing in this period. One example is the development of metallurgy. Metallurgy is the science of using metals for tools and weapons. Last video, we talked about the Stone Age. What human beings are going to develop to next after agriculture is the Bronze Age and eventually the Iron Age, where they're going to use metallurgy to develop tools and weapons and really start to dominate their environment. As a result of the Neolithic Revolution, society becomes much more complex, it becomes much more hierarchical, and gender relations were no exception. So patriarchy, the male domination in societies, developed as a result of the Neolithic Revolution. Think back to the hunter-gatherer days. Men were doing most of the hunting, women were doing most of the gathering, and you had a relatively egalitarian social life. Okay? That's all going to change with agriculture. Men are going to be stronger, they're going to be able to build those irrigation canals um, more effectively and they're going to get to begin to have more control over the food supply and they're going to take on stronger roles in politics and public life. Also, remember, we're seeing a population explosion. What does that mean? Women are having more children, which means they're going to be pregnant for a lot longer and taking care of more kids, which is going to start to develop the idea of women's realm being in the house and men's realm being out there in, in sort of public life. The Neolithic Revolution is highly controversial, even to this day. Famous thinkers like Jared Diamond argue that this is the worst mistake in all of human history. Without the agricultural revolution, we wouldn't have hierarchy, we wouldn't have patriarchy, we wouldn't have environmental degradation that defines a lot of communities today. On the other hand, big thinkers like Steven Pinker argue this is the greatest transformation because it allows human beings to develop civilization, and arts and technology, specialization of labor that came with the agricultural revolution. How could we ever get to the world today where we have smartphones and computers like you guys are using to watch these videos right now? So the legacy of this transformation is still highly controversial, right? And what I want you guys to remember is history is argument without end, right? You're always going to have these debates about the meaning of things constantly going on. So there you go the most significant transformation in all of human history, the Neolithic Revolution, Key Concept 1.2. Have a great day.